what's up? Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a full baby light highlight with a root shadow and taking my model super, super platinum blonde. So stay tuned. I am so excited to be doing this transformation today. My model has kind of grown out hair. She hasn't gotten her hair done in a little while. And so we're gonna be brightening her up, adding a beautiful money piece, but I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my full highlight slash baby light technique and some of my most favorite toners for blondes, including how I do my shadow roots and one of my favorite uh, formulas for a shadow root. So let's get started and I wanna show you her before. All right, so this is our models before. You can definitely tell she's got some blonde in there, but lots of depth, especially back here in this back section. It's been about six months since she's done her color and it was like a balayage back then. So we're gonna brighten her up a ton. And you guys can even see she has some of these kind of warm tones still in there, just residual. You know how hair kind of gets brassy and dull after time, just from hard water and stuff. So we're gonna be brightening her up. We're gonna do a fun little root shadow, a pop of blonde around her face. And I'm really excited to share with you guys this technique of how to transform somebody who's a little bit darker into a bright, beautiful blonde. All right, so for her, I'm gonna start with 15 volume. You guys can see she's really light naturally and we're gonna be doing a full baby light. And so because I'm doing baby lights and because I'm doing a full, I'm gonna start really low. Um, and I'm also gonna be adding in Olaplex, which will kind of take down some of the strength of that too. We don't need to start crazy. Um, again, she's got really um, thick hair itself but it's really light naturally and it's gonna be sitting on for a little while, so I would rather go more conservative by starting out with 15 volume. All right, so for sectioning for a full baby light, I am not a person who likes to section each section and make it all perfect. So personally, I just take the top section just above the ears and clip this away and really just kind of separate kind of the top and the front from the back. And then I will go through and actually start from there. But honestly, I don't really, like I said, section super crazy. So I'm just gonna start from here. We're gonna work our way around the hairline first, kind of do some diagonal backs, and then we're gonna start working up. All right, so one of the things that I really like when it comes to baby lights is I like when my clients can pull their hair back and have a beautiful blend. Now we are gonna be doing a slight baby shadow root on her, but we still wanna make sure that she has some brightness coming through here. So I'm going to take my first section and this is gonna be a little tiny baby light guy. I wanna make sure I'm getting in all these little baby hairs. So we'll take this, clip this away. And this is gonna be my very first section. Now you guys can see it's really thin. It's not super thick. Um, and I'm just gonna leave a tiny bit of hair out. And for this kind of sectioning, I personally like just regular foils. Um, I feel like they lock into place really well. You guys know I use Framar foils a lot. Um, these are just regular hair foils. I personally think they get a little bit tighter for me and the technique that I do, but that's just me personally. Um, so for this foil, now this one can feel a little bit awkward, um, especially when clients like don't move their head or whatever, it just can be a little bit awkward. So if this foil feels a little uncomfortable to you, that's totally okay, it feels uncomfortable for me too. So just keep practicing it, especially um, if you don't do a lot of full highlights or things like that. Um, honestly, just keep practicing this little area and you will get a lot better at it. So I'm actually gonna fold this foil into thirds just to help lock it into place a little bit tighter and get those ends in there. I'm gonna lock this guy down just on the corner here. And I'm just gonna kinda keep moving my way up on this section right here. So you guys can see I'm gonna take another piece here. Just got a few little baby hairs and stuff so I wanna make sure that I'm capturing those in there. And sometimes it can help too if you have your client just kinda turn their head a little bit and look down. That sometimes can help. It just depends on how you work and what's comfortable for your clients. For me, I don't like to have, make my clients like do too many crazy things with their neck because I know it can be uncomfortable. And if you guys realize this is their time to relax too. Um, and this is like the first part of the service. So you wanna make sure that they're feeling comfortable, they are feeling relaxed. But for these few foils that can feel a little awkward, um, then it's totally okay to move their head and adjust them and just like let them know, hey, I'm just gonna do it for these first couple foils. So I'm just kinda getting in there and you guys can see she's got a lot of depth in here. It doesn't look like she really has a lot of lightness. So I'm pulling all the way through. 
Now again, this is just 15 volumes, so it's it's gonna sit on for a while, and these are thinner sections, so we don't have to like bust through it with 20 or something like that. She doesn't need that. This is gonna be perfect, and it's gonna lighten out beautifully. So this one I'm just gonna fold in half, and fold in half again. And I'm just gonna continue this up for like maybe a couple more foils, kind of till I get to right here where I meet to the middle of her nape right here. Um, some clients I will have to do a straight across foil. It totally depends on the hairline, but I'm just gonna keep working my way up and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, so I went and I did, let's see, about four foils just around the hairline. You guys can see now I've gotten to this kind of V section in the back and I ended up covering her entire hairline down here at the bottom. Like I said, for some clients that have a really wide set hairline or a really wide set nape, you will have to do a straight across one, like a little baby light down there at the bottom. Again, it's all gonna depend on the client. She didn't need that. So what we're gonna do is now I'm gonna take this little baby triangle piece. And I know some of you guys might think you're really gonna foil that tiny triangle. Yep, I am. So I'm gonna take this little triangle piece and this is gonna be our straight across foil. So you guys can see, I'm just kind of deep weaving it there, leaving this little bit out. And I know that this might seem a little over detailed or over intricate because it's down here at the bottom. Is really anybody gonna see that? I don't want her to have a big dark spot down there at the bottom. So I take the time to put in these little tiny foils and you guys will see when we get around to the front, those little foils do make a difference. And maybe I don't have to do them every single time, but she doesn't have any lightness down here at all. So I have to put those kinds of foils in down here in order for her to get that brightness around the hairline. So now I'm moving up to my next section and you guys can see this is a little bit thicker, but I'm still going to continue with doing baby lights. So the difference between a highlight and a baby light is a baby light is definitely more thin. You can totally see through it versus a highlight's gonna be a little bit thicker. For me, I never really did like full, full highlights. I always would do something that's like a little bit thinner of a highlight anyways. So I would always kind of call them like hybrid lights. I just totally made that up right now, but something like that where they're just not quite as thick. This would be almost like a hybrid light, but because she has so much depth in here at the bottom, we need to get a little bit more brightness in versus just only baby light. So um, again, you'll figure out what works for you and how thick your baby lights are. But baby lights are traditionally a little bit more thin than a highlight. It's definitely something that you can still like see through when you're looking at the foil. So I'm just gonna continue up her head until we get to kind of about where I started this section. So I'm just gonna finish all the way up. We're gonna continue this. And when we get up here, I'll tell you what we're doing. All right, so I worked all the way up to here and you guys will notice that I do have some hair. I call these almost alleyways. You're obviously not gonna be able to get that in this middle foil, so I always make sure that I'm not over directing this hair into this foil because otherwise you'll get some uh, spot that's not quite blended well. So I make sure that I stay pretty much in my line. If that means you need to section out this section and clip it away, whatever works best for you, I just know that I can do that and I know how wide my foils are so I'm not over directing. That's just something that works for me. So now that I've gotten there, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to release the rest of her hair and I'm gonna kind of find the spot on her head that's kind of the top of her head. And I'm just going to section this little area out. And again, if you guys watch my other foiling videos, you're gonna notice that I don't really like clip it away and do all this crazy stuff. I just get it out of my way. And I actually foil backwards. So now we're gonna start in the crown of her head. I'm going to work my way down to that foil and then we're gonna work our way forward. So if I was doing a partial highlight, this is actually where I would start. This is just the extra that I do for a full. And then if I was to do a partial, I would just go from here, down there, and then work my way forward. So that's kind of the two differences between what I do. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my section right about here and I'm going to weave it out. And then instead of foiling down like I was before, I'm actually going to place my foil and foil backwards. Now I know some of you guys may have seen some of my other foiling videos and you know that I foil backwards, but if you haven't seen them, 
and this is totally new to you, this is exactly what I do. And the reason why I do this is it allows me to get a little bit closer and I don't have to stand over my client. So I feel like it's a lot better for my posture and all of that. I just personally love it. I feel like it works a lot better. So I'm gonna fold this down here and we're gonna keep continuing down. So I always leave a little section out um, with her. We're trying to get her really blonde, almost like platinum blonde. So um, I'm just gonna leave a tiny little baby light out, but it is important to leave some hair out. And the reason why is it grows in really, really nicely. Um, it's gonna grow in really subtly. Now we are gonna do a shadow root on her, but even if we didn't, this would grow in a lot nicer because we're leaving a little bit of that natural out. This is also a really great technique because you're able to get close to the root. Um, but you guys can see I'm not going all the way down and the reason why is we are gonna move these foils in a second so I don't wanna um, go too, too close where it would cause like bleed marks. So I'm just gonna kinda leave it right about there. It's kinda hard to see on her blonde hair. Um, fold this guy. Typically I only fold in half. This one I folded in thirds just because of her ends. I didn't wanna squish them too much but um, normally I just fold in half. So I'm gonna keep working my way down and we'll meet up with that section down there and then when we get around to the front, I'm gonna show you guys what we do there. All right, so we finished all our foils all the way down to this foil and so what I do is I just take my hair and I'm going to kind of place my comb down here, just the tail comb, and just use that to kind of fold my foils down. Um, this takes a little getting used to because you wanna make sure that you're not pulling the foils out. So if you are gonna try this technique, just maybe go slow the first time. I'm really fast and efficient at it because I do it all the time and I practice it a lot, but um, you know, just practice it. So we're just gonna take all these foils down till we get to that top section. And I'll show you on some of these foils. Sometimes they may slip and move. So occasionally, like her hair is actually not doing this, but sometimes clients' hair will slip. So you just have to kind of hold this little corner and then just kind of reposition it back in there if that ever happens. Like I said, her hair is not so bad. Sometimes it happens right here, kind of where the head starts to round off. So if that happens, don't stress it. Um, if a foil slips, just add in another foil. It's not the end of the world. You didn't mess it up. It's pretty common, but um, yeah. You do wanna make sure that when you're pulling this hair down, you're not seeing any bleed marks or anything like that. If you are seeing that, grab a towel, wet it down, make sure to correct that. You might need to place in another foil, something like that, but if you are seeing bleed marks as you're moving down, it's meant that you got too close to that edge, so you just wanna be aware of that. So now we're at the top here, and I'm gonna spin her around, and we're gonna start working our way forward. All right, so we've moved my model, I spun her around, now I'm standing in front of her and I'm actually gonna do the exact same thing, I'm gonna foil backwards, but we're gonna work our way up to this hairline. And again, this really allows me to get in really nice and close. So because we just finished with this last foil, I am gonna leave a low light out here, right? Uh, just like I did in the back, but now we're starting on this section. So we'll start with a low light and then I'm just gonna keep working my way up. And obviously every time I start this section, um, sometimes I will have to, de depending on how the client's head rounds out, I'll do a few more with her spun the other way so I'm not like leaning over too much, but it all just depends on the client and again, their hair, their head, their head shape, all that fun stuff. So once we paint this foil in, I'm gonna show you guys, we're actually not gonna fold it back. We're not gonna have to worry about that. So I'm just gonna fold it down just like that. And these foils just get to hang out like that. And this is another reason why I like this technique of foiling backwards is because I'm not having to fold it into like tiny little sandwiches. They're able to just kind of hang out um, that way and not be all squished up in there. Now, one thing you do want to make note of is with her, um, her part line is kind of over here. So I'm making sure to get both of those sections in there. You definitely want to make sure that you're getting both sides of the part. Um, even if the client parts really, really far over, I just parted her hair right here, but she parts on the other side. So definitely gonna wanna make sure you get both sections in there so that it looks really clean as she parts her hair any direction. So I'm just gonna keep working my way forward and I'll kind of pop in if I have anything, but this is pretty much just rinse and repeat, just continue down. So we're gonna keep doing this until I get around to the front. All right, so now we are at kind of her hairline and you guys can see she's got a lot of these little baby hairs and I wanna make sure that I'm getting those in my foils. So you guys can see even these last couple ones I've had, I ended up folding down again. That just helps lock it into place a little bit more, especially when we are dealing with baby hairs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to continue what I've been doing all the way through her hair. 
but I'm taking really, really small sections just to make sure that we get these little tiny baby hairs in. And for some clients that have like insane amount of baby hairs, you could even tear your foils in half if you need to, um, cause I wanna make sure you guys can see these little guys kind of popping up. I wanna make sure that we're getting those in the foil, so I'm gonna place my foil down, pop that over. But yeah, you could tear your foils in half, have really small foils for up here. Um, again, it just depends on how you work, but I've definitely done that before for those clients. I have teeny tiny little hairs just barely hanging on there. Um, these are really important to get because if not, you're gonna have this like fuzz of dark hair and it actually shows up really strongly. So I like to make sure that I get all these little guys in. And like I was saying in the back where you're gonna take time to do those little extra foils, this makes a huge difference in how your client's hair grows out and how it looks, especially pulled back into like a ponytail, things like that. See how small and fine this foil is? It really makes a huge difference. Um, one note that I wanna make um, is I did increase my developer to 20 volume when we started on this front section, I forgot to mention that. So this is now 20 volume. That's been kind of sitting in a bowl for a few minutes. So. 20 volume with Olaplex and then we'll continue that until we get to kind of this back section. We'll probably start to 25, but um, I'm just continually grabbing these little baby hairs, kind of weaving them out. And again, this is really gonna help it grow out nicely. And especially if your clients ever have any gray around their hairline, this is almost mimicking their natural gray color. So it grows out as if their gray was a highlight. So clients love that kind of stuff. And this really does make a huge, huge difference. I'm gonna do probably one more foil here. So I'm grabbing this tiny little baby section right here. And I did get a smaller foil because she's got all these tiny ones and I think a big foil would actually cause it to slip out. So I'm gonna do probably two foils here. Same thing, grab my lightener. And you guys can see I'm getting pretty close into that root area. I'm not um, going all the way down into it, but we're getting pretty close. Pull that guy out. So this is just a foil torn in half and it helps me just kind of lock it in a little bit so it's not falling out. Sometimes the bigger foils can be heavy. So this little baby foil trick works great. And we're gonna do one more. And I know you guys might think, wow, this is like so detailed, so intricate. I don't need to get that detail with my clients. Trust me, you do. It makes a big difference. And this, I didn't used to go this in depth when it, you know, back in the day when I was originally doing highlights and things. And when I started to, that's when I started to notice my clients' hair growing out beautifully. They could go longer in between appointments. And to them, that meant added value, which meant I could charge more for it. So um, it really does make a difference. All right, so these little fluffy guys, this is what I call the alleyway. And a lot of times stylists skip this section. They do the front hair and then they do the sides and they skip this alleyway. And so when clients wear their hair back, they have this dark section right here. And I don't want that to be for your clients. Again, clients notice these little things. So I'm gonna take just a small, small section here. And you guys can see, I just took it from natural parting. So it's a little bit woven already. And I'm gonna take a small little baby foil and apply my lightener up in here. Get it all up in there. And I'm gonna do this for just for a couple foils. Now, one thing that you don't wanna do is you don't wanna do back-to-back -back foils like this because then she'd have a blonde chunk right there. So we will leave a little low light out like we have been doing and that's gonna also help it grow out more naturally. I'm just gonna weave this guy ever so slightly. This kind of stuff is detail work and yes, it might take you a few extra minutes to do this, but like I said, your clients will notice. I know I keep saying that and repeating it, but it's, it really does make a difference. And this one I'll actually do a normal size foil because it is coming back further here. And so for some of you guys that might be feeling like you might be taking too thick of a section or something, or you feel like this is gonna be like a really harsh line, just take a finer section. If you really feel like it's gonna be harsh, do finer. It'll always end up blending better, the finer the uh, hair. So don't worry about it. The finer you go, the more natural it's gonna look. It's gonna look like the sun just kissed her hair right at her roots, so that's really cool. All right, so now I'm gonna do this little front piece here. And this is a really, really crucial foil um, because this is gonna be the foil that your clients wear back around their face. So we definitely wanna make sure that this is really fine. Every client's hairline is always a little bit different. So customizing it to them, this is typically the pattern that I normally go off of. So like diagonal backs. Um, and I always weave out this little chunk because sometimes this guy can be a little bit thicker. Most clients have that. Um, but again, it's always gonna just depend. So sometimes you have to do two foils here. 
um, one on top of the other, meaning one right here and one right there, but um, with her, we don't have to. Most clients, you can get away with doing just one foil, but it always just depends. Take your time to do that extra foil. Um, I swear it works. So now for these foils on the sides here, I am not doing backwards foiling, I'm doing regular foiling. So I've switched techniques at this point, um, but I'm still able to get really, really close in there. to continue back all the way, just continue doing diagonal back up until I kind of get up to this corner. All right, so now we've switched to the other side and you guys can see this is actually the side where she parts her hair. So she parts kind of right right here. So I definitely got um, part of that uh, side in our middle foils here, but um, she is a little bit higher on this side of where the mohawk kind of just came through. Again, that's just me the way I foil. So I am going to do just a couple foils down this way just to kind of cover this little section. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to clip this away because I want to make sure it's a clean section for myself. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to grab just a couple tiny, tiny baby lights. Now I don't want these to appear like straight across foils. So that's why baby lights are really, really important. That'll help um, just blend it a little bit better and make sure that it's not like a straight across. Looking and this is also kind of getting that alleyway in there as well. She has some existing highlights in there, so we'll pull those out. Um, I love this brush, you guys, because it has a tail comb on it. Um, this brush is from Framar. I love it. They don't have it in this color anymore, but they have it in black and a three pack. Um, if you guys want to check it out, I have the link to my Amazon shop. Uh, it's in there. All right, so we're going to do one more of these little guys. <laughs> So now that I filled in those two foils, I'm going to come back here and tackle our closer hairline alleyway. Um, I am going to use a smaller foil on this one because they're so little and dainty up here. So we're basically doing the same thing as the other side, but again, just customizing it for this client. Um, it's going to be a little bit different. Each side of the head's a little bit different. So just making sure to really customize it and take that time. So now we're here to her hairline again. I'm gonna do the same thing like I did on the other side, taking this little fine section. I'm actually gonna take a little bit more because she's got some smaller hairs here. And she has a few more baby hairs kind of in this alleyway. Probably she has a calic there. I have kind of the same thing on my head. So um, we had to add just a few more foils here than we did on the other side. But again, that's all just customizing it to your client. And that's why I like to teach um, sectioning and patterns that are customizable and things that you can take and tweak for yourself and your clients. That's why I'm not a huge fan of a cut and dry pattern because everyone's different. Everyone's hairline is different. And so one thing doesn't necessarily work for every single client. So that's the whole goal of my education here is to teach you how to customize it for you and your clients. So I'm just gonna keep working my way backwards, or not working my way backwards, working my way to the back section here. I'm just gonna keep uh, going at it, and I'll just kinda let you guys watch along as we do this, um, just so you can kinda get an idea of how we do all these foils. All right, so some of her ends are still a little bit warm and her foils are actually almost ready to rinse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally gonna take just some of these ends, I'm gonna tease them just ever so slightly, um, very loosely, and I'm just gonna kind of brighten them up just for the, like the last five, 10 minutes. We don't have very much longer on her hair. So I'm doing about 20 volume here. Now I know I would never stick this in a foil 
and do 20 volume for a long time, but this is honestly just bumping them up for the last like five, 10 minutes. I'm just gonna do these on a couple pieces while she's processing, and this is really gonna make a huge difference on just brightening up some of those ends. Okay, so we just finished all of her application. You guys can see I did some teasing on the sides. We pretty much didn't leave any ends out, but we're gonna let her process just for a few more minutes because she's actually lifting pretty nicely. So we'll rinse out the pieces when they are ready. And just so you guys know, this application took about an hour and 15 minutes. All right, so we just rinsed out all her foils, and before we do her toner or anything, I'm going to put Olaplex number two on her hair. We're gonna let this sit on for just a little bit, um, especially anytime I'm doing a blonde treatment, I always throw Olaplex in there. You guys know that, I'm a huge fan of Olaplex. So we're gonna let this Olaplex number two sit on. It'll help kind of get rid of some of that teasing we put in, and also just help kind of repair a little bit of her blonde hair. And then I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do for her root shadow and her toner. All right, so I'm gonna mix up her root shadow. And so I'm actually gonna do 8N and 7NB equal parts. I don't have 8N, so I'm gonna be mixing 7N and 9N. So I'm gonna do uh, basically one ounce of 8N and one ounce of 7NB. I love the 7NB because it just adds a little bit of warmth um, to the root area, but not a brassy warmth. And then the 8N will just be a nice neutral. And then for the developer, I'm going to do their thicker developing uh, developer because it'll actually make it thicker for a root shadow. So I like using this developer for root shadows or more precision application. It's still one-to-one -one and it just makes your Shades EQ a little bit thicker versus the traditional developer. All right, so I had my client sit up, and the reason why this bowl is a little awkward, sometimes I would just have my clients lift their head, but for root shadow, I wanna make sure that I'm doing a really precise uh, application. So I do have them sit up in the bowl. It makes it a little bit more comfortable for them, and again, of course, the client's comfort is number one, but also making sure that I get the application right is really important too. So for shadow roots, I like to start in this bottom section first. So I'm just going to kind of grab my section here, and I think it's really, really important to make sure that you're combing out the hair before you start working on it, before you even start applying your product, because that'll really make a big difference of getting the product all the way through and making sure that it's not like splotchy or dripping. Um, I personally love this comb. This is a wow comb. I actually have it linked on my Amazon shop as well. Um, this makes a huge difference because it has this little roller in there, so the product doesn't actually drag down the hair. Um, as traditional combs, it'll drag down the hair and you can get that spottiness in there. If you've ever had that happen with a root shadow, that is why um, so this comb doesn't make it do that and it's great for color melts all that kind of stuff highly recommend it all right so I'm going to start my application down here and kind of just pull this section out right here I'm gonna only drag it down about an inch now Shades EQ is definitely more uh, viscous so it's going to drag down naturally so that's why I'm only really dragging it down about an inch and um, but I do love Shades EQ for root shadows because it allows me to get through the hair pretty quickly um, and because of its viscosity so I really like it so I'm just gonna apply this like I do a normal root touch-up and uh, just work my way up the head and then when we get around the hairline I'm gonna show you what I'm doing All right, so I just finished this back section. Now I'm moving on to the front and I will section out um, just about three quarter inch away from her face. I'm not gonna root shadow that area till like the last minute. So I'm just kind of sectioning this out. This will be the very last little section we do. And this makes a big difference because we want that really strong money piece in the front here.
So this has been sitting on for maybe about eight minutes. So I'm going to do this last little section right around her hairline. But instead of making sure it doesn't squish back and get dark right on these beautiful blonde pieces, I'm just gonna place two foils right here. And this just helps kind of ensure that those pieces don't get squished and it protects them while we're applying this last little final piece. And for this part, I usually have my clients sit back um, just because I can apply it a little bit easier and faster. I'm just literally gonna apply it to just tap, tap these little tiny pieces, tap, tap, tap right around the hairline, no more than a couple minutes on this section. All right, and she is ready to rinse. This sat on for about two and a half minutes. And we're gonna rinse her. All right, so we rinsed out her root shadow and now I'm going to tone her end. She has a little bit of residual warmth just left over from previous color and all of that and probably some hard water buildup. So I mixed up Goldwell Colorons 10P, 10V equal parts and we're gonna apply this all the way through her hair and I'm gonna leave it out right around the uh, hairline just because she's already really blonde there but we will um, kind of just touch that at the last little minute. <laughs> So you guys can see this toner. It's been sitting on for almost 10 minutes here. I love this toner because it create such a beautiful, gorgeous blonde. Um, sometimes I'll use 10P by itself, sometimes I'll mix it together, but you guys can see just how devel it's developing so beautifully. It's not overtoning anywhere. Um, and even if it is, it's going to be like a beautiful kind of white, uh, creamy blonde. So I love this toner. I feel like it's great because it doesn't pull too rapidly. Um, so we'll let this sit on maybe for just like a few more minutes, but we're almost ready to rinse. And here is our final result, you guys. I love how it turned out. Look how blonde we got her. It's so gorgeous. It's a nice creamy blonde with that beautiful root shadow. It actually looks a little bit lighter in person than it does on camera, so I will be transparent about that. Um, but I absolutely love how it turned out. I think it's so beautiful, so creamy, so blonde, and so fun. So I hope you guys try out this technique um, and check out those formulas. They definitely make a huge, huge difference in the way that your blondes look. And I hope you guys try this out. One last thing that I wanna show you guys was the beautiful hairline detail. And if she wears her hair up in a ponytail, you guys can see all that beautiful blonde that's gonna come in there. But that nice little root shadow just softens it ever so slightly. And it just looks so gorgeous. This is an amazing technique for clients that do wear their hair up. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something brand new today, whether it's the way that I foil hair or one of the formulas that I used or even my shadow root technique. I hope that you take something away from this video and start to maybe practice it in the salon. If you're gonna take away something, comment below and let me know what you're going to try in the salon this week or next week or whenever you're back in the salon. And as always, if you haven't hit the subscribe button before or if this is our first time hanging out, make sure to hit the subscribe button below and turn on the little notifications bell because you will be notified the second that I post a new video and you're definitely gonna wanna be one of the very first people to watch my videos, so make sure to do that. If you haven't come over to Instagram and said hi yet, please come on over to Instagram, say hi, send me a DM, leave me a comment, let me know that you watched this video and one of your favorite things about it. I love connecting with you guys who watch my YouTube videos, so make sure to come over to Instagram and just say hi. As always, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.